recording is beginning and uh, we'll begin our worship in just a few moments. Let us take just a few moments in quiet to, uh, to invite God into this space, to ask God to be with us as we pray. Something, Jordan. Okay. <laughs> Seek the Lord while he wills to be found. Call upon him when he draws near. Let the wicked forsake their ways and the evil ones their thoughts. Let them return to the Lord and he will have compassion. And to our God, for he will richly pardon. Dear friends in Christ, as we prepare to worship Almighty God, let us with penitent and obedient hearts confess our sins, that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and mercy. Go ahead, Linda. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart, we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. O oh, come, let us worship. Let us say together the Venite as found on the screen in front of you. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his aided, and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord our maker. For he is our God and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. Oh, come, let us worship. The Psalm appointed for today is Psalm 118. We will read it responsively by whole verse. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Let Israel now proclaim, His mercy endures forever. Let the house of Aaron now proclaim, His mercy endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord now proclaim, His mercy endures forever. I called to the Lord in my distress. The Lord answered by setting me free. The Lord is at my side. Therefore, I will not fear. What can anyone do to me? The Lord is at my side to help me. I will triumph over those who hate me. It is better to rely on the Lord than to put trust in flesh. It is better to rely on the Lord than to put any trust in rulers. All the ungodly encompass me. In the name of the Lord, I will repel them. They hem me in, 
They hem me in on every side. In the name of the Lord, I will repel them. They swarm about me like bees. They blaze like a fire of thorns. In the name of the Lord, I will repel them. I was pressed so hard that I almost fell, but the Lord came to my help. The Lord is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. There is a sound of exultation and victory in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. The Lord has punished me sorely, but he did not hand me over to death. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will I enter them. I will offer thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. He who is righteous may enter. I will give thanks to you for you answered me and have become my salvation. The same stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing and it is marvelous in our eyes. On this day the Lord has acted. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Hosanna, Lord, Hosanna. Lord, send us now success. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. God is the Lord. He has shined upon us. Form a procession with branches up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will thank you. You are my God and I will exalt you. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Thank you, Linda. All right, the first reading is Kathy Hancock. A reading from the book of Exodus. Go and assemble the elders of Israel and say to them, The Lord, the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham, of Isaac, and of Jacob, has appeared to me, saying, I have given heed to you and to what has been done to you in Egypt. I declare that I will bring you up out of the misery of Egypt to the land of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hevites, and the Jebusites, a land flowing with milk and honey. They will listen to your voice, and you and the elders of Israel shall go to the king of Egypt and say to him, The Lord, the God of the Hebrews, has met with us. Let us go now, let us now go a three days' journey into the wilderness, so that we may sacrifice to the Lord our God. I know, however, that the king of Egypt will not let you go unless compelled by a mighty hand. So I will stretch out my hand and strike Egypt with all my wonders that I will perform in it. After that, he will let you go. I will bring this people into such favor with the Egyptians that when you go, you will not go empty-handed. Each woman shall ask her neighbor and any woman living in the neighbor's house for jewelry of silver and of gold and clothing. And you shall put them on your sons and on your daughters, and so you shall plunder the Egyptians. Then Moses answered, But suppose they do not believe me or listen to me, but say, The Lord did not appear to you. The Lord said to him, What is that in your hand? He said, A staff. And he said, Throw it on the ground. So he threw the staff on the ground, and it became a snake, and Moses drew back from it. Then the Lord said to Moses, Reach out your hand and seize it by the tail. So he reached out his hand and grasped it, and it became a staff in his hand. So that they may believe that the Lord, the God of their ancestors, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, has appeared to you. Again, the Lord said to him, put your hand inside your cloak. He put his hand into his cloak, and when he took it out, 
His hand was leprous, as white as snow. Then God said, put your hand back into your cloak. So he put his hand back into his cloak. And when he took it out, it was restored like the rest of his body. If they will not believe you or heed the first sign, they may believe the second sign. If they will not believe even these two signs or heed you, you shall take some water from the Nile and pour it on the dry ground. And the water that you take from the Nile will become blood on the dry ground. But Moses said to the Lord, O oh my Lord, I have never been eloquent, neither in the past nor even now that you have spoken to your servant. But I am slow of speech and slow of tongue. Then the Lord said to him, Who gives speech to mortals? Who makes them mute or deaf, seeing or blind? Is it not I, the Lord? Now go, and I will be with your mouth and teach you what you are to speak. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray together a song of Ezekiel, uh, Canticle 9. I will take you from the nations and gather you from every country and bring you home to your own land. I will pour clean water upon you, purify you from all defilement, and cleanse you from all your idols. A new heart I will give to you and put a new spirit within you. I will take from your body the heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit within you, make you walk in my ways and observe my decrees. You shall dwell in the land I gave to your forebears. You shall be my people and I will be your God. All right, I'm gonna unmute Mark here for our second reading from the Romans. A reading from the letter to the Romans. I appeal to you therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you not to think of yourself more highly than you ought to think but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in one body we have many members, and not all members have the same function, so we, who are many, are one body in Christ, and individually we are members of one another. We have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, prophecy in proportion to faith, ministry in ministering, the teacher in teaching, the exhorter in exhortation, the giver in generosity, the leader in diligence, the compassionate in cheerfulness. Let love be genuine, hate what is evil, hold fast to what is good, love one another with mutual affection, outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal, be ardent in spirit, serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope, be patient in suffering, persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints. Extend hospitalities to strangers. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. No, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink, for by doing this, you will heap burning coals on their heads. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mark. Uh, 
All right, Linda, I'm going to mute you because uh, it's hard for people to sing all together. There's an internet lag here. But please join me in singing this one verse of Jesus Loves Me to announce the holy gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. All right. Go ahead, Ma. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ is written in the eighth chapter of the Gospel according to John. Which of you convicts me of sin? If I tell the truth, why do you not believe me? Whoever is from God hears the word of God. The reason you do not hear them is that you are not from God. The Jews answered him, Are we not right in saying that you are a Samaritan and have a demon? Jesus answered, I do not have a demon, but I honor my father and you dishonor me. Yet I do not seek my own glory. There is one who seeks it, and he is the judge. Very truly I tell you, whoever keeps my word will never see death. The Jews said to him, Now we know that you have a demon. Abraham died, and so did the prophets. Yet you say, whoever keeps my word will never taste death. Are you greater than our father Abraham who died? The prophets also died. Who do you claim to be? Jesus answered, If I glorify myself, my glory is nothing. It is my Father who glorifies me, he of whom you say, He is our God, though you do not know him. But I know him. If I would say that I do not know him, I would be a liar like you. But I do know him and I keep his word. Your ancestor Abraham rejoiced that he would see my day. He saw it and was glad. Then the Jews said to him, You are not yet fifty years old, and have you seen Abraham? Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, before Abraham was, I am. So they picked up stones to throw at him, but Jesus hid himself, and went out of the temple. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Okay. So uh, if you join us for our daily morning prayer, you know that at this time we generally unmute and share some thoughts about the readings. Today I'm going to preach a short it's not really a sermon. It's more of a, a reflection, I guess. It, it's not quite pulpit pounding-y to really count as a, as a sermon. But if you have thoughts about the readings, please do type them into the chat. It's been a real gift to me to hear how God is speaking in each person's heart as we hear the word of God in scripture. I want to focus today on our reading from Romans and especially on these words. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Martin Luther King used to quote this passage often when he was in the midst of the civil rights movement, back during the days when he was facing down evil with little more than conviction that he was on the side of right and justice, that he had a community of faithful people around him, and faith that God would convict the hearts of his persecutors. It is perhaps easier when one has been called to battle stations, as we have, to have a clear and common enemy, an evil. But this virus is not evil. It is a part of God's creation. And when God saw God's creation, he declared that it was good. 
We often think of natural phenomena that hurt human beings as evil, like volcanoes or hurricanes, snakes and spider bites, tornadoes, the whole lot of it, right? But human beings, also part of God's creation, can also hurt and even kill human beings. And we are not evil. Harmful, terrible things can be done by creatures that are not evil. And so too this virus. If there is evil at work in the world right now, it is the same evil that was in the world before this pandemic began. The same evil Martin Luther King fought against. The same evil that killed our Lord Jesus Christ. A paralyzing fear of the power of death. Death says, be afraid. Death says, there isn't enough for everyone. Death says, let's prioritize the economy over the lives of precious human beings. And don't get me wrong, I understand that fear. I am as scared of dying and of losing people as anyone. It is natural to be afraid, it is not evil. But what is evil is allowing that fear to drive us to greedy and selfish actions. The Apostle Paul understood that fear too. He understood, as I mentioned last week, to what it was to be imprisoned, beaten, starved, driven from his home. And in the midst of that fear, feeling the same fear many of us are feeling here and now, he wrote this letter. Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in suffering. Persevere in prayer. Extend hospitality to strangers. Live in harmony. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Overcome evil with good. What an extraordinary thing to write. What an extraordinary call we have been given, even in the midst of our suffering. Not to fear, not to greed, but to love, hospitality, perseverance, and affection. Paul could write that in the midst of his fear because he had the faith in the one who had already overcome evil with good. He had faith in the one who had overcome death by death, who had willingly gone to the cross and let death think it had won. But while death speaks, it does not get the last word. When the evil in this world said that Jesus was trouble, he was a blasphemer. He had a demon. That there wasn't enough for everyone to have what he was offering without bringing down the long arm of the Roman law. That we should prioritize the status quo over the lives of precious human beings. When that evil buried God in the ground, God got up. Death says, be afraid. God says, death has been defeated. Death says, there isn't enough for everyone. God says, contribute to the needs of the saints. Extend hospitality to strangers. Outdo one another in showing honor. Death says, let's prioritize the economy over the lives of precious human beings. God says, every hair on your head has been counted. And you are precious in my sight. I defeated death itself for you. Even if the worst should happen, even if we should face death itself, and I'm seeing now in the chat that someone in our community has a relative who has, it will not be proof that we ought to have been more selfish. It will not be saying that the good we have done is in vain. Martin Luther King did end up dying at the hands of the evil he opposed. But the good he did was not in vain. Our Lord Jesus Christ died, and Lord knows his death was not in vain. 
even in death, we need not fear, for it is a place our God has gone before. We will not fight this virus by succumbing to evil. We will not let our fear of death lead us to hatred and greed and selfishness, for death does not get the last word. It has been overcome by good. Amen. All right, before I share my screen again, I am just going to type in this new uh, prayer request that we just received. I am so sorry, Art. It is uh, your cousin's husband who died of COVID-19. All right. Linda and Leo, you're no longer on mute. Okay. And our worship will continue now. As we affirm our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God. The Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. All right, Leo and Linda, I'm going to mute you. I'm going to unmute Tom and Linda as we begin our time of prayer. Go ahead. In peace we pray to you, Lord God. For all people in their daily life and works. For Peter, Nikki, and Candace in mourning, for frontline healthcare workers and for Art's family in the Netherlands who are mourning the death of his cousin's husband. For our families, friends, and neighbors, and for all those who are alone. For this community in our country and the world. For all who work for justice, freedom, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation. For the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth. For Jane, our bishop, and for all bishops and other ministers. For all who serve God in his church. For his own needs and those of others. I ask also for prayers for my sister and brother who are having the... COVID-19 test today and who for my mother who is in lockdown at her 
place. Hear us, Lord. For your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We thank you for the healthcare workers, the grocery workers, and everybody who has to go to work to help. Thank you. We will exalt you, O oh God. And praise your name forever and ever. Um, we pray for all those who have died in the peace of Christ and for those whose faith is known to you alone, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. We pray for Art's cousin's husband. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. Who put their trust in you. Creator of the universe, the light of your glory shines in the darkness of our lives. Make us attentive to your presence, prompt to serve you, and ever eager to follow in the steps of the one who is our true light, Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, your Son came into the world to free us all from sin and death. Breathe upon us with the power of your Spirit, that we may be raised to new life in Christ, and serve you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever and ever amen All right, hopefully the sound's gonna work for us here. I figured that out this week. And uh, this, the words uh, are slightly different than in our hymnal, but they should be on the screen. So uh, sing along if you, if you would like to at home.
liked that little bit of Welsh they did there at the end. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Amen. All righty. I'm going to turn the recording off.